today we will be discussing about an American who has done wonders as a computer programmer, entrepreneur, writer, political organizer, or I mainly know him as internet hacktivist. Presenting the internet's own boy, Aaron Swartz. Knock knock. Who's there? Aaron. Here I know. Aaron funny man. Who was always excited since his childhood to know the reason behind all the things that society have been following since ages. His focus was to bring a change in old beliefs for good. And the most, the most important thing, don't miss out to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And let us know in the comment section which internet hero you'd like us to feature next. Let's move on to our story. So this curious 12 year old kid made Infobase using a tiny server which was an open website where everyone can gain knowledge and edit it if they want to add something more to it. And surprisingly it was way before Wikipedia had begun. The computer was his favorite toy growing up in wealthy suburbs of Chicago. As his father worked for a tech industry so computers was always a part of his life. And at the age of 14, he co-created RSS, a popular tool for keeping up with the latest news and blog posts before the advent of social media. This Marvel kid was not done yet. He also formed a company that merged with Reddit and credited for making Reddit one of the most popular sites on the internet. Yet this guy wasn't just about coding, he was all about shaking up the system. Swartz wasn't just a programmer prodigy, he was also a force of activism, sparking change in the digital landscape. And post-edit era, he took the world by storm, co-founding the Progressive Change Campaign Committee and leading the charge against the notorious Stop Online Piracy Act through his online group Demand Progress. The internet was magical for him, but he saw the flaws, strict copyright laws and barriers limiting knowledge sharing, and to outreach a solution for this, he dropped off to Stanford and pursue his interest in internet freedom. In 2008, he wrote this manifesto, Information is Power. But like all power, these are those who want to keep it for themselves. The world's entire scientific and cultural heritage, published over centuries in books and journals, is increasingly being digitized and logged up by a handful of private corporations. His campaign for open access took an unexpected turn, which he challenged the US government's online court records system and PACER, which stores information about cases, court filings, and docket details. He was frustrated that PACERs charged the documents 8 cents per page at that time, which has now increased to 10 cents. So Aaron argued that the document should be free because they were produced at taxpayers' expense. So he set out to republish these documents on a public website for everyone to access. He went to a few libraries that allowed free Pacer document downloads and installed his own code to request a new document every 3 seconds. This way, he got his hands on nearly 20 million pages of documents or around 20% of the database and uploaded the files on Amazon's cloud computing servers. When the code system's IT department realized that something was wrong, the FBI got involved and contacted Amazon, which provided his name, phone number, and address, since their user agreement allows them to do so at the government's request. The feds investigated uh, but didn't prosecute him, and the homeboy hacks, the pilot thickens. Two years later, in a bold move, he hacked the servers on MIT's network in order to systematically release academic information by getting access to millions of files from a digital library. In September 2010, the federal government alleged that Aaron gained the access to MIT's computer network by entering a prohibited utility closet in campus or in the basement of a building which held network equipment and wiring. The room was supposedly unlocked. He plugged onto the network and placed it beneath the cardboard box. The laptop ran a script named keepgrabbing.py, which configured it to automatically download academic papers from the digital library JSTOR. Aaron used a guest account to access JSTOR. At that time, any computer connected to MIT's open wireless network had access to the digital library. Many of the institutions spend a lot of amount so that their students can subscribe for free. Otherwise, plans for individual would cost around $19.5 a month 
for just 10 PDF downloads. He created a fake guest identity that is that was called as Gary Host, which prompted the computer network to identify his network as Ghost, uh, when shortened an obvious reference to its potential to vanish. Although Aaron used a genuine guest account, but uh, still he violated JSTOR policy by using an automated program to access articles. At that point, he downloaded 700 articles in a minute. By January 2011, he had downloaded around 80% of JSTOR's database worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. He wanted to upload all the documents for free, but he never got his chance because JSTOR noticed a huge spike in downloads and alerted MIT which launched an investigation alongside the Cambridge Police Department and the US Secret Service. JSTOR blocked the IP address and the access to the account which resulted in another IP address and laptop logging in and downloading the documents in such a staggering rate that the several of JSTOR servers crashed. In order to take action against it, JSTOR restricted all the accounts from MIT to gain access for several days. Authorities captured Aaron when he came back in building to take the hard drive. The video you are watching was originally published by Wired.com, which obtained it uh, through a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit against the US Secret Services. The MIT police wasn't able to reach the closet on time to catch the suspect, but he did not leave the campus immediately. The laptop was gaining access from a different location to avoid detection, Later, an MIT police officer who saw the surveillance footage recognized that he saw a similar guy riding the bike in campus. Aaron was then arrested. At the same time, he was also possessed with a USB drive containing the program that says keep grabbing.py. It's the same program found in the laptop present in closet. He was charged with multiple accusations like wire fraud, violating the computer fraud and abuse act. So this guy was known for his internet activism, which led to the ultimate tragedy, which resulted in sentence of 35 years of prison and $1 million fine. Swartz stood firm and refused a plea bargain. He was on a mission of fighting for universities to drop that knowledge for free. His fight for free access to academic journals is still echoing in the digital corridors. It has since become an important tool for promoting open access to information. Aaron Swartz, an absolute legend, left a great mark on web development. Even after his tragic demise at 26, his fight for free access to academic journals echoes loudly. So that's a wrap for today's internet story with Saksham. We'll see you tomorrow with another interesting one. I'm sick of love songs, I'm tired of this And I wanna tell you straight just like it is You're watching me like you want me But you're still holding back, still holding back Honestly, you're annoying me With the way that you keep playing Show me your love like it is, like it is And open my heart like you're feeling